Hey everyone, God bless you again. Fred Crop coming to you from Healing Rooms here in Santa Maria. And today I want to just really break down a passage of scripture in John 15 verses 1 through 11. Here is another key, a nugget that Jesus gave us about how we can bear fruit for the kingdom of God. So let's jump right in, read the scripture and pray and we'll go for it, all right? Here's what it says, John 15 verses 1 through 11. It's, Jesus said, I am the vine, my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I spoke to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you're the branches, whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do uh, nothing, right? As If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, I love you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the words of Jesus that give us life, and we pray that we'll get a hold of his what he's sharing here and see how it applies in our everyday life and how we can draw life from Jesus. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Can you say amen to that? All right, so Jesus here is talking about how to live this Christian life, and he basically is saying you can't live the Christian life apart from him, apart from God that we must abide in the vine. I'll explain here in a little while what it means to abide. But the fact is, one of the best illustrations uh, that I saw when I was a young Christian was somebody took a pencil and they held it up in their hand and they said, you know what, if I uh, hold this pencil, as long as I hold it, it's standing up. But the moment I let go of it, it falls down. It doesn't matter if I hold on to it for 10 minutes all day, Five years, 50 years, as soon as I let go of that pencil, it's going to fall down. Well, here Jesus is saying, if you want to live a fruitful Christian life where you're bearing fruit, and by the way, God is expecting us to bear fruit. That's kind of what Jesus is talking about here. He says, by this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. And by the way, it says, bear fruit, more fruit, much fruit, and fruit that remains. So God's expecting us to bear fruit. So it doesn't mean we need to run off and try to do a whole bunch of stuff for Jesus. What we need to do is to learn how to abide in Jesus because it's through abiding. He is the vine, we're the branches. In other words, we don't produce the life, he produces life. We don't produce the grace, he produces the grace. We don't produce the power, he produces the power. And so the key is stay connected. So here we go. I'm just going to give you some insights from this. Jesus said, I'm the vine. And my father's the vine dresser. So Jesus is the source of our life, our strength, our ability. Uh, he is the supply for us. He is our truth. He is our knowledge. He is our righteousness. He is everything. Secondly, we're the branches. So our job is to draw life and strength and ability uh, supernatural ability. God wants you to live a supernatural life. We draw our life out of Jesus, out of him, not out of ourselves, right? We don't have anything to offer, but the, the thing we need to do is yield ourselves and present ourselves available and stay plugged into the vine. The third thing that I see in this passage is that Jesus is expecting us to bear fruit that glorifies and demonstrates him. He says, every branch of me that does not bear fruit he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. So I, the pruning, that sounds painful, right? I think the pruning is simply he cleanses things off of our life that would keep us from producing the most fruit that we can. The fourth thing I see in this passage is that every branch that does not bear fruit, 
the father removes. Now, there can be a lot of implications in this. Uh, it could be uh, that it's talking about people that aren't connected to Jesus are not going to be saved. They're going to be put into the fire, right? Uh, so, uh, you, you know, I don't, uh, I'm not sure exactly what Jesus is talking about here, but he's, he's talking about you need to be connected, right? Uh, the fifth thing I see here is that it says we are made clean by the word of God. So pruning is another way to say I'm going to, if you look it up in the Greek, it means I, he lifts up and cleanses the branches, right? So the Bible tells us in Ephesians, Paul says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her or wash her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water of the word. So it's the word of God that cleanses us. It's the word of God that purifies us so that we can bear more fruit. Another thing it says is that we bear fruit not by doing, but by abiding. So it doesn't mean we don't do anything. It just means that we're, we're not trying to get somewhere. We're trying to get something from God. So in other words, I'll say it this way. Uh, doing doesn't mean abiding. Abiding leads to doing. So the more you abide in the Lord, then you're going to bear fruit for him. Uh, another thing I see here would be a, a, the seventh thing, and that is abiding in him is the key to bearing much fruit. Jesus said, I am the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, it is he that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Let me just, I want to just get this down for you. You have to understand that apart from God, you can't do anything. We, go, we don't go out and do something for God. It's God doing something through us. That's one of the secrets that I found is that I'm not out trying to please God by doing something for God. I, what I'm trying to do is see what he's doing. I want to allow him to do what he wants to do through my life. So it's, it's more about yielding myself than it is trying to get somewhere in my own strength and power. So again, uh, it's abiding him. So as we abide in Jesus, we're going to bear fruit. Uh, another thing I see is that without Jesus, we can't do anything, right? So Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. So it's just important for you to get that. You've got to stay connected to Jesus. Now, if you're not connected to the life of Jesus, you're going to be unproductive. And not only that, it says you're going to dry up as a branch, and so the, one of the things that I found is that if I'm starting to get, you know, spiritually dry, it's because I'm not doing enough abiding in Jesus. Another thing I see is that if we abide in him and his word abides in us, we can ask whatever we wish and it will be done for us. Well, what do you mean, ask whatever you wish? Well, you know what? If you abide in Jesus and his word abides in you, you're going to ask things that are God's will. You're going to ask for the ability to bear more fruit. You're going to ask that you could glorify God with your life. You're going to begin to ask, and the Bible says, whatever we ask, he's going to give us. So why? So we can bear more fruit. And then another thing I see is that when we bear much fruit, uh, we glorify God and prove to be his disciple. So a real disciple is someone that is bearing fruit for God. You can see it in their lives. You can see uh, the, the maturity in them. You can see the, 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 the holiness of their lives. So that you can see uh, the, the love that comes out of them. They, they begin, Jesus said they'll know in the same gospel, John, uh, he said, they'll know you're Christians by the love you have one for another. So as we abide in God, then we glorify God and we prove to be his disciples. So let me just end with this. Well, what does it mean to abide? So that's probably the question that you would be asking. How do I abide? Well, the word abide for abide is the word meno, M-E-N-O, in the Greek. And it means to remain, not to depart, to be held continually, like holding the pencil, right? To remain as one, to wait for. So what we do is make sure that every day we're spending time to acknowledge to God, apart from you, Lord Jesus, I can't do anything. I choose to remain in you. I choose to remain connected to you. It means to remain in faith. And that's another thing. We, we continually abide with Jesus by faith. So I'm going to continue to believe in you. I'm going to continue to look to you. I'm going to be connected to you. I choose by faith to continue to walk with you, Jesus, and have you be my source. 
Uh, we live life out of our relationship. Is another way we abide, out of our relationship with him. So as we have relationship with him, it causes us to do good works that God prepared before we were ever born that will glorify him. It means to live in total dependence upon him. There it is. It's not depending on yourself. It's total dependence on God. It means to live your life from the word of God and prayer. You need both of those. Prayer is connecting with God and letting his life flow through you. The word shows you his ways and, and gives you faith to believe and act in the way that God has called you to act and accomplish the works that God's called you to accomplish. It means to live from the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm going to send the Spirit. He's going to be your helper. He's going to help you to live out this life. It means to acknowledge Christ in you. This is, we're talking about abiding. Christ in me, the hope of glory. It means to live out of the grace that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why in Hebrews it says, we must boldly come to the throne of grace that we might receive mercy and grace to help in time of need. So you need to make a decision. Are you going to be an abider? Or are you going to be separated from God? Are you going to be live life, try to live this Christian life in your own power? Or are you going to stay connected to the vine? Let me pray for you right now. Father, I pray for everyone watching this video. I pray that they would be abiders. They're going to stay connected to the vine. They're not going to let, let you know, they're not going to let go of you, and they're not going to let you let go of them. Lord, you were, we thank you, God, that you are well able to give us life and cause us to bear fruit for your kingdom. We pray that we can bear fruit, more fruit, much fruit, and fruit that remains. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I want you to know that I have a YouTube channel, and I want to encourage you to go to my YouTube channel. It's named under my name, Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P. -P. And when you get there, become a subscriber. There's lots of videos, over 360 videos that you can watch, and uh, that will help you. In the meantime, I want you to know that the Father loves you, I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.